Hello, I'm Dr. Jake Begun. Hello, I'm Dr. Yunnan. We are gastroenterologists from Australia and we specialize in inflammatory bowel disease. Today we're going to be talking uh, about the management of Crohn's disease and in particular uh, medical management as well as surgery. So we're going to be talking about the role of steroids in Crohn's disease first. Then we're going to be talking about the role of immunomodulators, biologics and when they're required and how they work, and finally talking about surgery. So before we go ahead, um, please press the subscribe button below so you can be up to date with some of the uh, videos that's coming up. So let's talk about Crohn's disease. Um, I have mentioned on the previous video on covering the overview of inflammatory bowel disease. With the Crohn's disease, it takes t sometimes a long time for you to come to the diagnosis. And by the time you get diagnosis, you sometimes present to hospital very unwell from the swelling in the small bowel or large bowel and cause some obstructive symptom or you present with the bad complications from the Crohn's disease. Um, and that's the time when you need something very quick acting but very potent so that um, you feel um, comfortable uh, rather than take other medication that takes time for it to work. So we're going to talk about um, acute manage medical management of um, Crohn's disease. So Jay, can you talk, take us um, on what options that's available mm -hmm. for us? So when we have someone with Crohn's disease who is quite ill, we need something that works fast to relieve those symptoms and reduce the inflammation. And historically, that has always been the role of steroids. So typically, for someone who has moderately active Crohn's disease, we would choose an oral steroid, something like prednisone, which is a systemically acting steroid that's taken orally. Uh, it gets absorbed by the body and it decreases the immune response throughout the body, which can be quite helpful in Crohn's disease. It acts very quickly, uh, but it can't be used for long times because of the side effects that we have over the long term. So typically we use courses somewhere between one and two months long for the acute treatment of Crohn's disease. However, sometimes people come to the hospital, as you said, very sick. And in those cases, they might not even be able to tolerate any oral medications at all. And we use intravenous steroids, perhaps for a few days to control the inflammation before switching over to oral steroids. And that would typically be the management of a Crohn's disease flare or new diagnosis in the adult world. Pediatricians, however, have been looking at other types of therapy for um, Crohn's disease because the side effects of steroids in the pediatric population can be quite pronounced. And they discovered that uh, dietary therapy can be very helpful. Uh, typically, the first line therapy and dietary therapy of acute Crohn's disease is something called EEN, which is exclusive enteral nutrition. And that's when you substitute uh, for table food, taking liquid uh, nutrition in the form of poppers uh, and having no table food. And that can be just as effective as steroids in controlling inflammation with the added benefit of we see better growth and better nutrition in kids. There are newer diets coming as well, and the most recent one that's um, getting a lot of press lately is the Crohn's disease exclusion diet, which excludes many things from the diet, so you're on a limited repertoire, but it's real food, uh, and that also seems to be effective in controlling the inflammation in Crohn's disease. But all of these therapies are generally short-term therapies to get control of the inflammation, and then we put, uh, or we ask people to go on to therapies that can be used uh, for longer periods of time to maintain that remission that we achieve with steroids. Uh, one of the main principal medications that we use are immunomodulators. So, Dr. An, maybe you can tell us about immunomodulators mm -hmm. for Crohn's disease. Yep. So, may, um, there are two classes of immunomodulators mm -hmm. that's available for Crohn's disease. One is thiopurines, um, and there it, it includes medication like 6 mecaptopurine, either thiopurine or thioguanine. And you also got methotrexate option, which can um, usually be in, in a Crohn's disease uh, given um, weekly dosing orally, but sometimes in a sick patient, we tr you can use the upcut injection form as well. Um, with this medication, it, it is a very good at uh, maintaining the healing of the gut. Um, however, it takes a bit long time for it to really work. So it takes from eight to 12 weeks for it to work. And that's why it's good to have um, what Jake has mentioned before, serotherapy or dietary therapy to get you um, better quickly and then this medication really act to maintain the healing of the gut. 
However, at the beginning stage of um, when you start taking this medication, it is important to monitor for any potential side effects such as any impact on the liver or any impact on the bone marrow. So we usually do uh, blood tests every two to four weeks, making sure um, if there's any significant impact on it, we catch it early so that you don't have to worry about bad side effects that happen happens with these medications. Then, once immunomodulators are not able to control your disease, we'll start thinking about biological therapy. So Jake, can you mm -hmm. um, tell us about it? Yeah, so although immunomodulators can be very effective, there's about a third of patients, or maybe a little more in Australia, that require escalation to biologic therapy. Mm -hmm. Biologic therapy are monoclonal antibodies, which means that there are proteins that are injected into the body that very specifically target certain pathways. These are even given, uh, either given as a subcutaneous injection to yourself in the belly of the leg or as an intravenous infusion. Uh, we can put them into three classes of medication. The first class are the anti-TNFs, and these monoclonal antibodies, these biologics, target TNF-alpha, which is a potent um, uh, cytokine, a pro-inflammatory hormone. They come in two forms, one that's given subcutaneously, uh, that's adalimumab, or infliximab, which is given intravenously. Uh, uh, on various timescales. The second class are the anti-integrin medications, which there's one, vetalizumab, and that works by specifically blocking immune cells from going to the gut. It's a gut selective agent. It's given as an intravenous infusion. And the third one is an anti-IL-12, IL-23 medication. That means that it targets IL-12 and IL-23, which are also pro-inflammatory hormones. Uh, and this medication is given in the first instance as an intravenous infusion on the first day, and then eight weeks later, self-injections, and that's ustekinumab or Stellara. And so those are the three biologic medications. These also requiring some monitoring as you're on these agents, and also because they are expensive still, they're new medications, uh, they're regulated by the PBS, and therefore your gastroenterologist will be putting in applications to the PBS for approval every six months or so. So that's biologic medications, which can be very effective. But sometimes um, medications aren't enough to control the inflammation or we don't want them. And in some cases, we're reaching for surgery as an option. So Dr. Ahn, can you run us through surgery for Crohn's disease? Sure. So a lot of people has this myth that surgery only happens when all the medical therapy has failed. And that's not really true. So in inflammatory bowel disease management, and especially with the Crohn disease, because it um, does not have ongoing inflammation throughout the bowel, it's more of a patchy inflammation. Um, when it's acutely unwell in one segment, then you get those obstructive symptoms, as we mentioned before, or you get complication of Crohn's disease. At that stage, sometimes it's beneficial to have a planned early surgery with the surgeon, then keep increasing your medication to just treat the very short, short segment of the bowel. Um, Surgery can be helpful in um, not at the very initial stage of the um, diagnosis, but throughout the course of your medical therapy, if we deem that uh, by monitoring with um, either ultrasound or yeah, medical imaging like um, uh, MRI, if we think there's a particular area that's not um, narrowed or had a complication not due to inflammation but from the scar tissue that was there for a long time no matter how much medication we would give it to you uh, you wouldn't heal and that's the more of the scar fibrotic tissue that just need to be resected and that's when also surgery becomes very useful and um, I think Dr. Bigan and we both believe it's always good to have a planned surgery earlier on as an outpatient rather than emergency surgery that happens after the complication has happened but of course, if there is a complication, we do have to have emergency surgery, absolutely is important. So I think that brings us to a close then. Hopefully you found this information useful in your understanding of Crohn's disease. Don't forget to press the subscribe button below to get updates when new videos are available from